In this video, we are going to solve an example for a preemptive priority scheduling algorithm. So what is priority scheduling? You can check my earlier video on this. And now we will see that if a new process which arrives in the system has a higher priority, then it can preempt a lower priority process which is currently using the CPU. Let's take an example now. So there are five processes in the system, the burst time, the arrival time and the priority of the processes are given. We are assuming that higher priority is indicated by low numbers. That means P2 is having the highest priority of all these given processes. Now let's start working out this example. At time zero, we just have one process in the system which is P4. So P4 will be allocated the CPU. At time 1, P3 arrives in the system. Now the priority of P3 which is 4 will be compared to the priority of the running process P4 which is 5. So we see that P3 has a higher priority. So since this is a preemptive algorithm, that means P3 will preempt P4 and now P3 will be allocated the CPU and P4 will come in the ready queue. So P3 will be allocated the CPU, so it will be out of the ready queue and P4 will come in the ready queue. However, P4 has already run for one time unit so only two time units of P4 are left. Now P3 starts running and at time 2, P1 arrives in the ready queue. So the priority of P1, which is 3, will be checked with the priority of P3, which is 4. So we can see that P1 has the higher priority. So now P1 will be given the CPU and P3 will come in the ready queue. And since P3 has already run for one time unit, so only seven time units are left over here. Now we see that P1 starts running, but it has run for two time units. Now at four, another process P1 P5 is arriving in the ready queue. The priority of P5 is compared with the run priority of the running process P1. As we can see, P5 has higher priority. So P5 will be given the CPU now and P1 will be put in the ready queue. So P5 will run at 5 now. We have P2 coming in the system. Again the priorities will be compared and now P2 will get the uh, CPU. In the meantime you will see that P1 had run for two time units so only four are left here. P5 had run for one so only three time units are left and now P2 is running. Burst time of P2 is two so it will run for two time units since no new process has arrived in the system. So P2 is already running. So it is not in the ready queue now. After P2 finishes, the priority of the processes which are there in the ready queue, P4, P3, P1 and P5 will, will be compared. Since P5 has the next highest priority, so P5 will get to run. Remaining time unit of P5 was 3, so it will run, run from 7 to 10 and P5 is also completed now. So we have P5 also completed and P2 also completed. Remaining processes are P4, P3, P1. Out of this, P1 has priority 3, which is the highest among the remaining ones. So P1 will run for 4 time units now from 10 to 14 and then this is also completed. Now out of P4 and P3, 
Now P3 has a higher priority so P3 will run. It had only 7 time units left so it will run from 14 to 21 and then finally when P3 is also complete P4 will get to run for the remaining 2 time units. So now all processes will be complete by time 23. If we compute the waiting time by looking at the Gantt chart that we had just prepared. So let's go by process. P1, it, wait, it gets the CPU at time 2. Its arrival time was also 2. So 2 minus 2 is 0. It did not have to wait for long because it was a high priority process. After it completed over here, it was preempted by P5 and another process P2. So from 4 to 10, it had to wait again in the ready queue and finally it got the CPU at 10. So 10 to 4, 4 to 10 sorry, it had to wait again in the ready queue. So the total wait time was 6. If we look at process P2, so P2 came at time unit 5, it got the CPU at 5. So 5 minus 5, 0. It did not have to wait for any other time in the ready queue. For P3, it got the CPU at time 1. It had arrived at 1, so 1 minus 1. But after that, at 2, it was preempted by other processes. And then finally, it got its CPU back again at 14. So from 2 to 14, again, it was waiting in the ready queue. So we add that time also. So the waiting time in the ready queue, it becomes 12 for P3 and similarly for P4 and P5. So the average waiting time would be the sum of all the waiting times of the processes divided by the number of processes which will give us 8.